But con contractually, how many times do I have to say you're doing great? Uh, we did, we said five, but that's permanent. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're doing great, John. That's right. Four to go. Freaking center. All right, hey folks, welcome back. I am joined by Ryan Kleckner. Say hello to the folks. Hello, folks. Hello, folks. Uh, anyway, we've been doing some long range precision rifle stuff, having a great time. This is not my old uh, stuff. I used to be a door kicker. Ryan was a sniper in First Ranger Battalion. So anyway, we're collabing. He's been teaching me the ropes. We've already done a couple videos where we learned just basic sniper rifle setup and then another video on the ancillary equipment, essential gear, that kind of stuff. Now it's time to shoot. So I've got optics. These, This is done in mills. I already have some background thinking in MOA and whatnot, but I don't know how to do any of this. So What's a quick, simple way without all right. learning all the math and going yeah. through sniper school that I can do this? So you're exactly right, is that people get a little freaked out when they start shooting at distance. Just one thing to remember is the bullet has no idea how far it's traveling. So you pull the trigger the same on that rifle at 100 yards as you do at 1,000 yards. Same trigger control, same fundamentals, same breathing, same stable platform, same sight picture. Everything is exactly the same. That's, right. that's actually why we talked about how the junior guy in a sniper team is the shooter. Right. Because he doesn't need to know what's going on. Right. Matter of fact, we had fun running a course, and I was just telling you, put your scope here, look at that target, and we were getting great hits because the spotter's allowed to run the show. That's just a testament to the fact that what you do is the same. But the problem is you get out to this distance, and you go, holy smokes, we're starting at 700 yards yeah. at this, tar this range here. We're starting at 700. What even do I do to my scope? Where do I start? Well, in that accessories video, I showed you some of that ballistic software and some of the range finders that sync up and everything. Well, already we've already seen the folly of those. Yeah. Dope is what we call the data that you have that you refer to in the future to, to make an adjustment. So at a certain distance, your dope is how much elevation you have. Well, we use the laser range finder with all the cool bells and whistles and the ballistic software and everything, and it told us what we should be using. I call that try dope. Like, let's try that to see what yeah. works for your gun. But every scope, every gun, every ammo is different, so it's never going to be perfect. And sure enough, we were on up close, yeah. but at each further distance, we had to fine tune it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going right. to get some tri dope. We're going to say it should be about this distance. We're going to shoot it, and we're going to watch what happens. You're going to reload the gun and call that shot. Guys, call your shots. If John pulls it, I mean, you're not going to pull a shot. I know you're not. We've been shooting a while. I can shoot. I've got good fundamentals, yes. and we stretched. Uh, this Tika, we stretched it out to what, uh, 600 yards, yeah. 700 yards? 600, 680, I think. On the other range, yeah. yeah, and we were making hits. It was great. But I, if he does do a bad shot and he doesn't tell me, I can't make an adjustment. So that's be honest with yourself. So. Right, and I'm supposed to call left, right, down, up to mm -hmm. say I missed in that way. So, yeah, uh, so what I see, and we're trying this tri dope, and maybe the bullet impacts low. If John tells me, oh, that was low, I know that you pulled it low, and I'm going to have you do it again. I'm right. not going to make an adjustment. If he tells me that was a good shot and it was low, well, we're either going to do the math, which we won't get into here, or we're just going to use our reticles and use them like rulers and measure. Well, that was one mil low. We're going to come up a mil and we're going to shoot again. Now the wind, that's just going to take years for you guys to get used to. Right. We're going to try something. I mean, if we have wind blowing right to left, don't hold to the center of the target. Right. You might as well at least hold a little to the right and see what we can do from there. But good communication, Right. getting somewhere good to try, Dialing it in and then writing it down. Check out your notebook here. So look at the handy dandy hey, notebook. Hey, it's know? even branded. No other dope book works except for this. Well, that one Warrior works Power better one. for sure. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Now, and so we've already got some notes in here. We dialed it out to 615 uh, yards. This is with a can. When I take that can off, it's going to shift to zero. Hopefully, the adjustments still stay the same. But we did shots at 250, 311, 380, 415, 480. 545 and then 615 and we have our mill adjustments here so the big goal here is all right let's go out you're going to give me my approximate whatever we'll mm -hmm. use some technology to do that as well laser range finders and uh, your laser range finders giving us the adjustment mm -hmm. so we'll use that to get there 
and then we record it. And so the big goal is, yeah. is now I am synced up and I just know based off a different distance, I generally already know my elevation. So that's the cheat sheet is if well, you- And this is theoretical. This is what should happen. That is what does happen with Boom. you and your rifle. And this is why I like index cards or simple field notes book like this. This is all you need for your data. Getting the books to have all the information in there, who needs that? That's handy. Next time you go to the range, you pull it out, you make the adjustment, you get cool. some hits. We're zeroed. I have my fundamentals checked out. He's uh, taught me his language for spotting. And now the thing remains for us to stretch this out even farther. We're at 700 and this will go out to how far? Going out to a thousand here. Nine, to 900 thousand. and change, just shy of a thousand. Yeah, all right, yeah. awesome. So uh, you're gonna just come along and watch me fail forward here, so. Let's do it. This video is sponsored by Interstate Guns. They set us up with all the goodness and anything we mention in the long range videos, whether it was one you already watched or whether it's this one, all the links are provided down below. Now, I can't link directly to guns because it violates YouTube's policy. So I made a blog first link down below and it's going to show you all the the guns, the rings, the optics, range finders, spotting scope, so you don't get the wrong thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out the video. It's going to be awesome. Here we go. All right, first target, which is target number four. I am set. I want you to try 4.8, please. 4.8 mils. Set. What do you think for a wind call, John? What's your guess? Center. If you shoot quick, it's a center. You're right. Center. Shot was good? Good. What's your dope at? 4.8. 4.8. Yep, I'm coming just to confirm. Nope, you're at 3.8. Uh, that's 4. That's 4.8. Never mind. I, uh... Hey, counting is hard, back up off of me. Well, I, I, at least it made sense. <laughs> I was able to walk up and guess what was happening. All right, good deal. All right, center hold. Center. Listen for it? Hit. <laughs> Takes some time to come back from 700 yards, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That was a hit with authority. It was. I want you to do it again for some confirmation, okay? Okay. Focus only on the reticle. Steady pressure on the trigger, center hold. Center. Nice job. Write it down. It's your dope. 700 yards. 700 even? Yes. Well, it's 698. We'll call it 700. There's not a difference in those two yards that you can and adjust. And 4.8. Next target, target number five. That's the tree? Yep. Got it. I'm there. I'm getting a reading for you. Oh, finally, I'm waiting on you. 5.4 mils. So come to what you think 5.4 is and then come up another mil. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's got jokes. Hey, he's got jokes. He's hilarious. All right. All right, what do you think the wind's gonna be? Um, center. Okay, there's something deceiving going on in that valley. You're gonna need a hold left, but try the center just to see what it does. I'm gonna favor left. All right. Right. Okay, do it again. If you called it right, let's get a good center hit. Which meant I, I held actual center of the target. Correct. Can you see, how well can you see the target right now? Well. Darkest spot, lower third on the right edge was you. Got it. Where should I hold? Hold left. Center. Come up one tenth. Center hold. Center. Listen. A hit. <laughs> Got hung up. Good to go. Let's move to the next target. Target number six. Uh, what's my dope for this one? Oh, we confirmed. You tell me. It's confirmed there. Whatever's on your scope is it. I'm um, 5'4". Five, 5.4? Four. 5. Four. How far out are we? Oh, I'll get you the distance again. Just a second. 760. 
Okay. I don't think I'm 5'5". Five, five. Okay. There you go. Moving to the next target. 840 yards. I see it. Give me 6.2 mils. Set. Favor right. Call your shot. Did the reticle move at all? No. Good. Shame to waste that. That was a great shot. <laughs> I don't know if I got another one of those. All right, I'm ready. Favor right. Center. That was a center? Uh, it was maybe a little bit more than the favor right. It was okay. almost on the hold right. All right, half mil left. Set. Listen. Hit. Nice job, John. Thank you. Right down your dope. Is that 6.1 or two? Whatever you see it as is what matters. That was 840 yards. I was at 12 power, just so you know. Was it easier for you or no? Um, yeah, so my big problem is losing the target. When I first started in doing all this stuff, I was using all the magnification I could, but then after a shot, I would lose it, and then I would make an adjustment, and then it took me forever to find the target again, yep. so. Target seven. Why well, you gotta be so close to me? I don't like being this close to your crotch. On camera, apparently. <laughs> yep, continue up the tree line all the way to the left. You'll see the main target with a white flag above its head with smaller targets to the right. Copy. Are you on it? I'm on it. Focus only on the reticle. Half mil left. Call your shot. I don't know. Okay. Is that an acceptable answer? Yes, that's perfect. I really, I only need to know if it was good or not. And I don't know means it wasn't good. Yeah. It was just moving a little bit too much for me. I should have backed out and rechecked my position. Yep, or don't worry about it. Don't make sure you're just, as long as you're not doing that monologue in your head of ready, 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 there. As long as you don't do that, you'll be fine. One mil left. Center. One and a half left. Center. One and three quarters left. Listen. Hit. One and three quarter mils left. Pretty big graduation on the wind. Crazy, right? What'd you hold on that wind call? I tried to do one and a half or, uh, or one and three quarters and it All ended right. up being about one and a half. Come up another tenth of a mil, please. Good to go. Yep, one and three quarter left. Center. Listen. Hit. <laughs> That's awesome. 925 yards, John. Holy smokes. That's a record for you. Yeah. Well, we, all of these are records. What's your after, dope? After 600, I am 7.2. Okay. Super fun, man. Yeah. <laughs> so we have completed a respectable dope sheet. We started around 250 after zeroing at 100. Mm -hmm. 
Zero should be at 100 for precision shooting, and we went out to 925. So got a pretty respectable dope sheet here for the Tika, and we also just did another one for the Bagara, and that's why we're at a different range. Um, so I've got my dope sheet, and let's say I leave you, your tutelage, I branch mm -hmm. out of the nest onto my very own, and I'm just not making <laughs> hits. What are some of the things by way of atmospherics or other goofy stuff that uh, I need to know. I'm picturing you going out of the nest on your own. I am. You're going, just why don't you call your spotter anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you don't call your spotter enough. So yeah, we, we have concrete data that we not only figured out on our own, we confirmed it and tested it. So we know that's what happens with gravity. We never are gonna know what's gonna happen with wind. I mean, we can write right. down and say, when you have a 10 mile an hour wind, this is about what this bullet does. You can do that, but it's so hard to determine what a 10 mile an hour wind is from one space to the next. And you're gonna have some environmental effects that will change. So there are things like temperature and the air pressure and the humidity and all those things that actually do affect the flight of the bullet. And they, they determine how much drag that bullet's gonna have and how fast it slows down and therefore how much it drops. You really wanna get wrapped around the axle, go figure all those out. I think you should just keep in mind and learn the basics of, hey, if I go higher in elevation, the air's thinner, which means my bullet isn't gonna slow down as much. So if anything, my dope, the numbers might actually be a little bit less. I might not need to come up as much. Got it. Or the temperature is one of the biggest ones you're gonna have. A hot chamber, hot air, that bullet powder is gonna burn faster and hotter, bullet's gonna fly further or faster. But the really good way to do it is what we just did here. Record this data and the environment where you were at, the elevation and the temperature for the day, okay? Don't geek out on it too much. But take the time to go to Alaska or go somewhere else where the weather is drastically different, pull out a fresh dope sheet and do the exact same thing again and compare it. Right. And you'll see how your rifle performs from one to the next. And keeping those logs without too much extra information, you'll be set. Just get out, shoot, look at dope sheets. And the biggest thing I'm finding is, man, use that laser rangefinder. That seems to be the most important piece of kit for sure. me. You need to know how far the target is for sure. Right. Yeah, you really, if you don't know that, then and then guessing. the other thing is to uh, range it using mill dots, which we're not talking about yeah, we won't in this video. So the Ryan's super obnoxious, and this is why. It's because he can spot the stuff. Is an experienced spotter, usually in a two-man team. It's the spotter who's the senior guy, and it's the shooter who is the more junior guy. But yep. I'm like, all right, well, how do you tell the wind? And, and some people have got the wind meter, the Kestrel right here. Yeah. And then some people are like, no, it's the debris, or it's the, it's the leaves grow you know, the grass and all this misinformation he's been busting up. And I'm like, well, how do you tell then? He's like, I look at the wind. And I'm like, yeah, the wind is transparent, Ryan. You can't see the wind. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I can. First bat, best bat. I'm like, shut up, man. So it's like the Matrix, guys. Once, but, you, once you see it, you see it. Are you, are you, you're for real? I can you see the wind. See, that's... We'll try not to leave here to do it. Here's how you guys can see the wind. Get an optic off the rifle, spotting scope, even binoculars work. Look at the target, back the focus off till about two thirds of the way and still try to look at the target. It's gonna be blurry, and you should see slight waves or slight disturbance. We call that the mirage. I don't see it. You can even see it in the snow. It doesn't need to be hot outside. And depending on the angle and the characteristics of how that mirage is flowing, you can actually see the wind. And he sees the bullet trace, which I very rarely see any bullet trace. I just can't see it yet because I suck. Even when I was spotting no. for you, he was a crushing it as a spotter. And man, with a good spotter, as long as you have good fundamentals, which I do, I'm you a do. good shooter, mm -hmm. as long as I have a good spotter, but each time he's like, oh, nope, nope, wind changed, hold left. Hold right now. Have in every single time it seemed we were immediately on, and I'm like, oh, spotters are important. So but, uh, calling your shots is important too. I want to leave you guys with that. Is so while we're complimenting each other here, John's calling his shots is making it easy for me. If you guys are out there shooting and you're pulling the trigger and you're giving me bad data, well, I'm trying to make a judgment off of that data. So the reason I'm able to make a new wind call so quickly is not even just seeing the wind. I just saw a bullet go through the wind. I get to see exactly what will happen with that gun and that bullet in this environment. So the sooner I can get a good call from John, I can see what happened and I can make an adjustment, the better off we're gonna be. Right, yep, well cool. Guys, I hope you learned a lot. I learned a ton, man, and it's kind of the uh, rubber meets the road, brass tacks kind of stuff where we're not all computer stuff out here. We can immediately pop down and from you know 900 yards up to 200 yards, 
really, really quickly, just within a few seconds, we're making yep. hits. And then very quick adjustments. So if we didn't hit the very first one, we're probably two shots away from an actual hit. And some of those were just immediate hits at 700, 800. So that was really impressive that all the gadgetry and whatever, it's more about the experience and the hard data. And uh, the, yeah, anyway, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I agree with you. And this is tactical, practical, whatever you call it, shooting versus bullseye shooting. And this is more fun for me. And I appreciated all the nice tips because it's, I'm, I'm not as much interested in the sporting aspect of it. That's nice and that's cool. But I want the practical stuff where, you know, you're kind of hunting bad guys. And so even when I'm reloading, uh, the gun goes dry and I'm supposed to take one round and put it in the chamber, allow my bolt to go forward, then drop this and reload it and keep eyes on the bad guy while I reload to this. And so all that just natural, of course, that's the right thing to do from a warfighting perspective. Mm -hmm. But I appreciated that kind of stuff as well. Anyway, guys, this is Ryan Kleckner and he's got a lot of good stuff to uh, teach about long range precision shooting. This is not the only video we're in. We also have links for his stuff, but check out the other videos we've done and we've got more coming. So uh, all that good stuff is awesome. We wanna thank Interstate Guns for supplying the blasters and stuff and sponsoring these videos. Subscribe, comment, like, hit the notifications bell, bookmark the page, uh, send us Christmas cards, and uh, train hard, train smart. You gotta remember all that stuff. It's tough. Sounds tough. Yeah.